Good morning, friends, and welcome to All Saints Episcopal Parish here in Hoboken, New Jersey, on this, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. No matter where you are, we are so glad that you have joined us for worship this morning. A reminder that two weeks, no, one week from today, on July 5th, in the evening at five o'clock, we will begin our All Saints Summer Read, Ibram X. Kendi's How to Be an Anti-Racist. You do need to register in advance in order to get the Zoom information. You should have received an email about that. The link is also in the e-news that comes out on Fridays. If you do not have that information or are not on our email list, please contact the parish office and we'll be sure to get you signed up for that so that you may register for the summer book read. Also, please know that we are in the process of planning our first in-person worship. Hopefully that will happen within a couple of weeks. It will be outside on the lawn at Holy Innocence at Sixth and Willow. Even if we do start in-person worship because numbers may be limited, we will still continue to live stream a service. More information will come to you as those plans are developed, so do stay tuned for that. And now I invite you to continue in our worship singing together the hymn, Morning Has Broken. the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let us confess our sins to God. God. 
God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. O God, let our mouth proclaim your praise and your glory all the day long. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. O God, be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of your countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The psalm this morning is Psalm 13. We will read it responsively by whole verse. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How, How long shall I have perplexity in my mind and grief in my heart day after day? How long shall my enemy triumph over me? Look upon me and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, lest I sleep in death. Lest my enemy say, I have, I have prevailed over him, and my, my foes rejoice that, that I have fallen. But I put my trust in your mercy. My heart is joyful because of your saving help. I, I will sing to the Lord, for he has dealt with me richly. I will praise the name of the Lord Most High. A reading from Genesis. God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. 
the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Please join me in reciting the canticle, the first song of Isaiah. Surely, Surely it, is it is God who saves me. me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember his name is exalted. Sing, Sing the praises, praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because you're of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Please join me in reciting the canticle, A Song of God's Love. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this the love of God was revealed among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through Jesus Christ. In this is love, not that we love God, but that God loved us, and sent his Son that sins might be forgiven. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we ought also to love one another. For if we love one another, God abides in us, and God's love will be perfected in us. A reading from Matthew. Jesus said this, whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. He meant God the Father. And whoever offers a cup of cold water to someone who is thirsty as my follower, he or she will be rewarded. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Come, Holy Spirit, take my lips and speak through them. Take our minds and think with them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you. Amen. What are we to do with this reading from Genesis? 
We have seen over the past couple of weeks how God fulfills the covenant with Abraham by giving him a son, Isaac, long after Sarah was of an age to bear children. We heard Sarah's laughter. We witnessed Hagar's cries as she and Ishmael were banished from the community. All of this happened, and yet we are to believe that the God who promised Abraham that he would be the father of nations would then threaten to take it all away? What kind of cruel, heartless God is this? Many scholars of the Hebrew Bible will tell you that the story of the binding of Isaac is actually here to illustrate the goodness of God. Many of the local tribes of the land of Canaan practiced child sacrifice, demanded to appease an angry god, Moloch or Baal. That an angel of the Lord called out to Abraham to stay his hand is evidence that this god, the god of Abraham, is a different kind of god. This is a god who does not demand death in order to give life. It still seems an awful and sadistic way to establish this point. But this isn't the only baffling part of this reading from Genesis. At the very beginning of the chapter, God calls to Abraham and tells him to take his son, his only son, and go to Moriah to sacrifice him. But we know that Abraham has another son, Ishmael, banished along with his mother, Ishmael is a legitimate heir to Abraham. We have seen how God made a promise to Hagar that her son Ishmael would father multitudes. So right off the bat, this story doesn't add up. From the first time we encounter Abraham in Genesis 12, God is promising to make a great nation of him with descendants as countless as the stars in the sky. And yet here in this part of the narrative, the angel of the Lord says, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you and will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. Was the covenant not good enough for God? Why this test? And where was Sarah? Can you imagine that Abraham would have told her about this plan? Can you imagine what her reaction would have been? No, Sarah appears nowhere in this account. The next time she is mentioned, at the beginning of the next chapter, she dies. I would not be surprised if it was from a broken heart. Which brings me back to my question, what are we to do with this text? I believe that there are a couple of things that we can wring out of this. First, Abraham comes to us through the centuries as larger than life, fully trusting in God and faithful to the promise. But if you actually read the 10 chapters between God's first call to Abraham and this one, it's a bit more complicated than that. He went down to Egypt to escape a famine and gave his wife Sarah to Pharaoh to save his own skin, passing her off as his sister. When Pharaoh found out, he basically paid Ab Abraham off to get out of town. This is where Abraham's wealth comes from and maybe even Hagar too. He did not trust enough that God would provide an heir through Sarah, and at her urging took Hagar, who became pregnant. He once again passed Sarah off as his sister and gave her to yet another king, and that ended with even more wealth for, for Abraham. So to say that he perfectly trusted is not entirely accurate. So maybe asking him to sacrifice his son, the promised fulfillment, was, as the text says, a test. 
because God could not lay the foundation of the covenant on someone who was not fully and completely sure that God would provide. The angel of the Lord affirms that Abraham has passed the test. Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. The terrifying price that Abraham had to pay for God to fully trust him was to demonstrate a willingness to do everything God commanded, no matter how steep that price. The second thing to remember is that while God provided a ram in lieu of Isaac, God did not do such a thing for God's own son, God's only son. Tradition has it that Mount Moriah, the location of the binding of Isaac, is also where Jesus was crucified. God did not, in this case, provide a substitute. The self-sacrifice of God was the ultimate outpouring of love for humankind, the eternal covenant made with us, that death is not the end, that our sins are not held against us, that we are justified, made right with God, and given eternal life. In the letter to the Romans, Paul writes that we were once slaves to sin, and sin leads to to death. But we have been freed from the bonds of sin and death so that we might have life. But this life is not just ours to hold for ourselves. It is for all God's creation. We are the beneficiaries, the heirs of the promise of the liberating, life-giving love of God given us in Christ Jesus. We do not need to prove our worthiness. We do not need to hoard it. It is not in limited supply. It is not pie. It is limitless and abundant. Our job is to share it as generously as it has been given to us. Jesus said, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Later in Matthew, that welcome is part of the final judgment when the faithful don't even know that it was Jesus whom they welcomed as a stranger. Yet in welcoming him, they were welcoming God, the one who sent him. In feeding and giving drink and visiting in prison, they were serving Jesus and in turn serving God. This is the life of faith. God does not test us with calamities or demands. We are freed from having to earn God's love through the power of the cross. And how are we to repay God for such great love? We can't, not really. But God doesn't ask that of us. Love God, love neighbor. That's it. In the words of the great hymn, Were the whole realm of nature mine, that were a present far too small, love so amazing so divine demands my soul my life my all amen
we join together now in saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hear our cry, O God, and listen to our prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. I invite your prayers of thanksgiving or intercession at this time. We continue to pray for all of those who are suffering from COVID, those who have died and those who mourn them. We pray for all of those who have died due to violence and armed conflicts around the world. We join together now in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. 
Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. I invite you now to sing our closing hymn, Now Holy Spirit, found on page 8. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.